Please join Gabby Magali for the Pledge to the Flag, followed by the National Anthem by the Bayonne High School Bees Knees. Gabby? Homage and respect due to the flag of our country. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Now, how about a nice round of applause for that beautiful, beautiful rendition. Gabby, the Disney Standard. Can we be seated? Superintendent Neese and the entire Central Administrative Team, Board President Maria Villaro, Vice President Chris Munoz, and all of the honorable members of the Board of Ed that are here, Board Secretary Dr. Gary Mader, Bayonne High School, as well as District uh, Administration, the Bayonne High School students, the perfectly behaved Bayonne High School students who are sitting over to the left, who will be making us very proud someday. Former Superintendent of Schools, Dr. McGeehan, and probably the founder of this program, Dr. Great to see you. Mayor Davis and his entire team, we welcome you. You'll be hearing from Mr. Davis shortly. Uh, the whole team is here and we thank them. Uh, Hudson County Commissioner Ken Kopaz, Assembly Elect William B. Sampson IV. We know him as Nico, graduate of Bayonne High School. He may still owe a detention. I'm going to double check on that, but uh, he's come a long way. So Thank him for being here. Police Chief Geisler, Fire Chief Mr. Weaver, Bayonne EMT Chief Michael McCabe, Michael Embridge, Deputy Chief of Public Affairs, U.S. Army, and all our veteran members here that came to pay honor. Our guests you will meet shortly. We begin our program with the district's leader. I introduce you to Mr. John Neese, Superintendent of Schools. Members of our community, our elected officials, members of the United States military, all veterans, all volunteers, we sworn to uphold, keep us secure. I thank all of you. I'm proud to join you on this very wonderful day. Um, I'm going to date myself a little bit. Does anybody remember back in 1976? In 
New Jersey, you could put a license plate on the front of the car, and it was a white license plate that said, uh, New Jersey, the crossroads of the revolution. And I would argue Bayonne is the crossroads of protecting America's freedom. And all of you who made the ultimate sacrifice, uh, thank you for your valor. And thank you for all those in honor living amongst us. From Valley Forge to Candelar, all threats, foreign and domestic, our veterans have borne the costs of America's wars. And they have stood watch over us for America's peace. I congratulate everyone, all of our veterans that are honored today. And now I turn the program over to Dr. Dagnan. Thank you, sir. Good morning. Thank you, Superintendent Neese. Welcome to our distinguished guests and our honorees and their families. These heroes before us understood that service does not end once you return home. In fact, for our honorees, the peers have just begun. They have improved our lives and surroundings through their continued devotion to country and community. Their singular and collective actions have inspired thousands to work, volunteer, and understand the meaning of honor. Bayonne has the distinction of producing three Medal of Honor recipients. Further, the city and the school district has won countless civics heroes. There have been many men and women who dedicated their lives to the progress of our community and the preservation of our way of life. The best example of that collective service is the success of the Veterans Museum. The museum welcomes over 200 of our students and staff every year going out of their way to provide veteran speakers and lecturers offering an unparalleled educational service to our students. They have established a learning community that is invaluable not only to our students, but to our citizens as well. This museum, through its efforts to educate, have created a fitting memorial to all those who gave the last measure of devotion. Their memories are forever enshrined on the wall so they may continue to inspire generations to come. Command the floor and the posts were also instrumental in developing the wall of heroes at City Hall. It is our mission to assist the museum in their efforts by raising awareness for their facility. The community has embraced our yearly dedication of flags seen on your way in today with donations in the thousands. The paving the way for our heroes program, designed to line the areas surrounding the plaque with names of servicemen and women, will act as not as just a yearly endeavor, but also a continuous effort to allow the community to honor someone year-round. Moreover, banners will adorn the interior of our campus and our current and past honorees. The heroes of this community answered the call without hesitation and served with distinction. We thank you for being here to honor them. At this time, I would like to show you a clip of our learning community established by the Bayonne Veterans Museum. Thank you very much. The great city of Bayonne has a historical narration reflective of and with military partnerships and support of the American Armed Services. From the earliest forts during the American Revolution to the famous PT boats of President Kennedy. From the naval base that supplied the Persian Gulf War to the three proud residents who were bestowed the nation's greatest heroic acknowledgement. In 1919, returning servicemen charted Bayonne's very first Veterans of Foreign Wars post in order to help digest and embrace the battles of the First Great War while aiding other returning soldiers in the assimilation back into daily society. This post was rightfully named after the first and last service members from the Bayonne community to fall in line of duty during World War I, Mr. Martin Joyce and Mr. William Herbert. In 2006, Commander Glenn J. Flora and Senior Vice Commander Joseph Kennedy decided to transform the Joyce Herbert VFW Post 226 into an educational interactive museum, highlighting the celebrated contributions of our local servicemen and women through various photographs, artifacts, and personal displays. All the artifacts are here, were donated over the years by the different veterans or their families, and keeping the tradition of the military alive. Over the years, the collection has grown, and so has the amount of annual visitors. The Joyce Herbert VFW Post 226 is also proud to work in partnership with the Bayonne Board of Education in order to service the student population through class trips, group discussions, and personal interactions with some local veterans. As a result of this proud partnership, roughly 8,000 students are educated on our local military history each academic school year. I think coming to this place, seeing 
all the different military uh, um, pictures and everything from many years ago, and also the uniforms and stuff like and that. And I think it gives them a sense that, okay, this is real, these people are real, and this is what they do, or what they did. And um, I think it's very important. It's very important that the children learn what the veterans went through in different wars, World War I, World War II, Korea, Vietnam, Iraq, Afghanistan. The history is important because once we understand the history, we can do two things. One, we understand what it cost for liberty and freedom. And number two, we also understand obligation. I think that uh, it's important for the children to learn, to learn our history, who we were, where we came from, and how we can get better and do more. I also think it has a kind of a, an overarching uh, tie into natural sensibilities of being committed to, their, to the country they live in now. So I think it helps assimilate and it gives them a sense of who they are and also to explore broader possibilities of what their own careers may lead them to. The Joyce Herbert VFW Post 226 Military Museum is a nonprofit organization which relies on public donations in order to continue working towards the educational mission established in 2006. We keep as much uh, exposure by bringing veterans here to uh, show the uh, students and the uh, elected officials and the private donors that this is a, a very worthwhile cause to, to continue and, and, and maintain. Post 226 has been working diligently to showcase the local military heroes and with future support has major plans for institutional growth in the future. At this point, it gives me great pleasure to introduce the leader of this great, great city, Mr. Jim Davis. Good morning, everyone. Uh, to all our veterans in the room today, from everyone here, two words. Thank you. To all the Marine Corps brethren out there, happy birthday. Today is the Marine Corps birthday. We owe nothing more to anyone more than we owe our veterans. Without our veterans, we're not here today. We don't get up and enjoy our daily lives and raise our families without our veterans. And they do it quietly. They serve their time, and they come home. Those who served in war come back, and most of the time, they keep it to themselves. They keep their experience to themselves. They just want to come back, have a quiet life, and raise their families. We spend a couple days a year honoring our veterans, when in all honesty, every single day, we should all think and spend one moment about why and who we are. And the why and who we are is because of our veterans. Look at the world today. Everywhere you look around the world, there's a pocket of conflict going on. Even within our own country. We spend more time trying to tear ourselves apart than bring ourselves together. And all we have to do is look at all of our veterans. Just see them. See them all here today. Every one of them is different. Yet they didn't ask who their partner was. They didn't care who their partner was. They were there to serve with their brother and their sister. And we as a nation need to look to them for guidance and to lead us back to becoming one. Just one country, just one person, because that's who we are. Ladies and gentlemen, we are Americans. I am not an Irish American. 
I'm an American. I was born here. I was raised here. My father is a veteran. I understand where this all comes from. But we all have to look at each other and learn who we are and understand who we are. And we, are, we don't have to look any further than our veterans for guidance. So to all our veterans, one more time, two words. I want to say thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I bring back to the podium Dr. Dennis Stedman, who will have the honor of introducing our guest speaker. Thank you, Mr. Dr. Rowe. The Bayonne Public School District is honored to welcome Lieutenant Colonel Thomas C. Darrow to our Field of Heroes ceremony. Lieutenant Colonel Darrow was commissioned as an active duty Army Engineer Officer in 2003 after receiving a degree in management from Providence College. Upon completion of dive school, he built a team of new and experienced divers and deployed with his dive team from Fort Eustis, Virginia to the U.S. Central Command Area of Responsibility where he acted as detachment commander. Bayonne is no stranger to the field of diving. The first African-American master diver and first amputee diver in the U.S. Navy, Carl Bashir, attended Salvage Diving School in Bayonne, which brings us even more pride to welcome you here today. In 2010, Lieutenant Colonel Darrow was assigned to Joint POW MIA County Command, renamed the Defense Accounting Agency. In 2011, he deployed in support of Operation Enduring Freedom with assignment to U.S. Forces Afghanistan as the Deputy Engineer responsible for base transition and closure oversight. From 2019 to 2021, Lieutenant Colonel Darrow served as the commander of the Shoka Battalion at Joint Base McGuire, Dix, Lakehurst. Lieutenant Darrow was responsible for providing pre-mobilization training and training management support for the National Guard and Reserve units throughout the Northeast region of the United States to advise and assist five brigades, 20 battalions, and numerous companies across 11 states, impacting 13,000 soldiers annually through partnership and directed exercises. Currently, Lieutenant Colonel Darrow is Professor of Military Science for the University of Seton Hall Army ROTC program. Lieutenant Colonel Darrow is married to Dr. April Darrow, I just learned from molecular biologist. And they have three children, Aiden, Evan, and Ian. As a further point of pride for us all, especially our students here this morning, Lieutenant Colonel Darrow used his time and his education to wisely become a published author. Will you please all join me in welcoming Lieutenant Colonel Thomas Darrow. Good morning. Mayor Davis, Superintendent Neese, Secretary Maeda, Principal Baccarella, President Vallado, Vice President Munoz, the honorable members of the Bayonne Board of Education, city officials, and all the distinguished guests in attendance. Thank you for having me here today, and thank you for honoring our veterans. I'm sure this is a common for any keynote speaker at this event, but it truly is an honor and a privilege to be with, here, with you here today. If you spent some time around the military, and maybe even heard a speech or two, you may be familiar with the Army mantra of the three Bs. Be brief, be brilliant, and be gone. All I can promise today is that I will be brief. Growing up, I never considered myself a part of a military family. I was ignorant to the history of my family's service, and to some degree, I still am. I will never profess to have a great memory and often struggle to recall aspects of my childhood. I use that as a disclaimer before I say uh, that I never quite remember talking about military veterans in my youth. And I miss the opportunities to learn about my uncle's service in the Coast Guard and my grandfather's service in World War II. Thankfully, the sense of service was always a part of my life, however subtle, which today I can attribute to the spirit of service which I now know runs in my blood. So I thought today I would, I would speak with you about those things that I hope all parents discuss with their children and for veterans to share with their fellow, fellow citizens. The stories of our veterans about our veterans are ever more important as the shadow of September 11th grows alongside all of our nation's great trials of the past. Veterans Day was formerly known as Armistice Day, was originally a US legal holiday to honor the end of World War I. 
In November of 1919, President Wilson declared, declared November 11th as the first commemoration of Armistice Day, and he did so with these words. To us in America, the reflections of Armistice Day will be filled with solemn pride and the heroism of those who died in the country's service, and with gratitude for that victory, both because of the thing from which it had freed us and because of the opportunity it has given America to show sympathy with peace. In 1938, through an act of Congress, November 11th was made a legal holiday. In 1954, at the urging of the veteran service organizations, such as the American Legion, the VFW, and Vietnam Veterans of America, Congress amended the act in 1938 by replacing the word pharmacist with the word veterans. On June 1st, 1954, November 11th became a day to honor American veterans of all wars. Although additional legislation and confusion led to some, led to the observance to shift from November 11th, in September of 75, President Ford signed into law the annual observance of Veterans Day on its original date of November 11th. Interestingly enough, the term veteran is defined in U.S. law as a person who served in the active military, naval, air, or space service, and who was discharged or released therefrom under conditions other than dishonor. I find it reassuring that as a nation, we recognize anyone who donned a uniform and service to this country. Although in its infancy, Veterans Day was honored the heroes of World War I, today we appropriately say thank you to all those who sacrificed in service. As defined, the word veteran is not explicit or inclusive of what it means to be a veteran. Veterans are most assuredly those who served, but no one serves alone. At the very least, the military develops a sense of family where you build an unbroken bond, a sense of family with those who serve alongside you, the soldiers, the airmen, the sailors, marines, or guardians who serve on your left and on your right. We all serve with family, whether it's family you grew up with or family outside the service, family serves too. Together, the military family and traditional family are often a reason a service member serves. I truly believe that without family, there would be no veterans, and so it's important to remember that being called a veteran is a family affair. I want to share with you some research I did with my last unit, as Dennis mentioned. I had the privilege to command the 2nd of the 315th Brigade Engineer Prop Battalion stationed at Joint Base McGuire Diggs Lakehurst, just south of here. When I arrived to the battalion, I wanted to know more about the unit's history, and I found a comprehensive book which chronicled the 315th Infantry Regiment's birth and disbandment during World War I. The regiment was conscripted from New Jersey and Pennsylvania, initially stood up at Camp Meade, and ultimately stood down at then Camp Dix, New Jersey. In reading through the exploits of this book, I found a forward by one of the regimental commanders who adequately captured the sense of service for service members and family. Colonel Alden Nodes wrote to the regiment and acknowledged the soldiers and families with the following words. Now that our task is done, I can freely acknowledge the pride that wells up in my heart whenever I think of you. You have by your devotion to duty, and all that that phrase implies, made for your, your regiment an unblemished history. You have been privileged to share a mighty task in behalf of civilization, humanity, and right. And you have done it faithfully, modestly, and well. You who scan these pages may well be proud of the loved ones whose names appear in this volume, proud that you have him to give, and that you have the strength to do it bravely. You have in no small measure suffered the anxiety and sacrifices that weigh so heavily upon those who remain behind. You have oftentimes, even though your own burden was great, helped to make his lighter with cheering news. In these things you have also played your part. For you who have lost your all, I feel the most profound sympathy and respect. Find comfort and consolation in the knowledge that he died in a cause that called for the best blood and manhood of our country. And that his blood sanctifies the soil in which he was laid to rest. 
his courage, his example, and inspiration to his comrades who bring back the story of his valor. Today we share in the valor and service of five inductees into the Bayonne Field of Heroes. These men and women share the sense of service not only drove them to serve their country, but to continue to, their service to others for many years after hanging up their uniforms. Whether on land or on sea, these honorees protected the freedom we all enjoy today. They stood to be counted when others would not. And the least I can say is thank you. Thank you, sir. Well done. And now we present the Bayonne High School Band, which will perform probably one of the most meaningful pieces of music, in my opinion, the military medley. And of course, when you hear the song from your branch, please feel free to stand and be recognized. So I present to you the Bayonne High School Band. Social Studies here in the school district, and Mr. Neil Carroll, Social Studies teacher and counselor. Gentlemen, the show is yours. Good morning, everyone. Harry and Zach Katansky. World War II was raging in 1943, and 23-year-old Harry and P. Zach Katansky, Mead Kaczynski, a recent graduate of Bowen Hospital School of Nursing, eagerly responded to an American Red Cross recruitment campaign. It was an important opportunity for women at the time to aid the war effort and save lives. On April 19, 1943, the Army of the United States of America appointed Harriet P. Kaczynski as a nurse at the Army Nurse Corps with the rank 
with the rank of second lieutenant. After taking her oath of service, her military service began when she reported for duty in Atlantic City, where Harriet completed her basic training in November 1943. Harriet was transferred to the United States Station Hospital in Fort Niagara, New York, where she cared for injured soldiers returning from battles in Europe. She was also assigned to tend to our soldiers at other U.S. bases, including Fort Dix, Fort Lewis, and Camp Crowder, Missouri. In July of 1944, one month after D-Day, U.S. Army dispatched Harriet to Europe, and she was assigned to a U.S. Army base in Great Britain, where she served in the operating room at 107th General Hospital. It was here that she was promoted to first lieutenant in April 1945, and where she was awarded three honorary medals, the American Campaign Medal, the European Middle Eastern Campaign Medal, and the World War II Victory Medal. Following the end of World War II, Harriet received a certificate of service certifying that she served honorably in active federal service in the Army of the United States from April 19, 1943 through November 16, 1945. In October 1946, she continued her career as a dedicated nurse, serving the Bayonne community for 40 years as an elementary school nurse where she was employed by the Bayonne Board of Education. Lynn Polzel, who stepped forward, receiving the award for Harriet's Acutans. Harold Spann. Harold Spann was born in Cross, South Carolina on April 12, 1947. He attended Central High School. In 1968, Mr. Spann was drafted into the U.S. Army and served in Vietnam as a tank operator and squadron leader until 1970. He was the only member of his family to serve in the military. Mr. Spann and his wife Gloria moved to Bayonne in 1972. They have two children, Andrea Myers, and Harold Christopher Spann, who followed his father and served in the U.S. Army. They also have three children, grandchildren, Brittany, Keyshawn, and Michaela. Mr. Spann joined the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 151 and became a lifetime member. The chapter considered Harold a very valuable member who was willing and ready to serve in any capacity necessary. He was happy to be united with fellow Vietnam veterans with whom he formed a strong bond. After the chapter retired his colors, he joined the F.A. McKenzie Post, number 165, in 2017, until the present. He is currently serving as a third vice commander. Mr. Howard's back. Joseph Kachansky. Joseph Kachansky was born and raised in Bayonne. Upon graduating from Bayonne High School in 1964, he enlisted in the United States Army. After completing basic training at Fort Dix, New Jersey, he was transferred to Fort Rutger, Alabama, where he attended aviation training school. After time at Fort Benning, Georgia, George Joe became part of the 11th Air Assault Division, which was reassigned at the 1st Air Cavalry Division in preparation for Vietnam. His unit, the 48th Air, Air Assault, 48th Assault Helicopter Company, was assigned to provide support to the 1st Brigade of the 101st Airborne Division, the South Korean Blue Dragon Marine Brigade, and the Army of Vietnam units. Joe was honorably discharged on June 21, 1967. Since the 1980s, Joe has been involved in veterans' affairs. He was one of the founding members of the Vietnam Veterans of America Chapter 151, and served as president and vice president. Joe was also not only a member of the Bayonne Vietnam Veterans Memorial Committee, he designed the monument located at First Street and Trask Avenue in Dennis P. Collins Park. Additionally, Joe has served as a member of the Bayonne Memorial Day Parade Committee, 
held past membership in American Legion Post 165 and American Legion Post 19, and has volunteered his time as a tour guide at New Jersey Vietnam Veterans Memorial in Holmdown. Moreover, he has been a guest speaker at various schools, civic organizations, and businesses, as well as a tour guide at the Joyce Herbert BMW Post 226 Veterans Museum. In this capacity, Joe has helped to educate the public about the allegiance and sacrifices of veterans on behalf of their country. Apparently, Joe is a life member of Vietnam Veterans Chapter 800, New York, New Jersey, 1st Cavalry Division Association, and the VFW Post 226, where he holds the position of Color Guard Captain and Chaplain. Importantly, Joe was instrumental in pushing for a memorial for C.W.O. Douglas L. O'Neill, the only MIA from Bayonne in all of Hudson County. He was also instrumental in the creation and dedication of the Lieutenant, Lieutenant Corporal Stanley J. Kopchinski Park, named after Stanley J. Kopchinski, Joe's childhood friend and Bayonne's first casualty during the Vietnam War. Joe Kopchinski has also been an active member of the Concerned Citizens of Bayonne, currently serves as a member of the 9-11 Teardrop Memorial Committee. Joseph James. Prepared to serve his country and defend freedom, Brendan J. Pearson joined the U.S. Navy in October 1949 on the eve of the Korean War. He began his wartime service as a fire control technician and petty officer second degree aboard the heavy cruiser USS Baltimore. As part of the Navy's 6th Fleet, the USS Baltimore was assigned to the important role of assuring that the Soviet influence in the Balkans and Mediterranean did not extend as the conflict in, the Korea, in Korea continued and the Cold War tensions escalated. This mission had both military and diplomatic aspects as Mr. Pearson participated in from a variety of large scale military exercises to showing the flag at numerous foreign ports from Gibraltar to the Dardanelles, to preparing the U.S. At, the Queen at Queen Elizabeth II's coronation naval review in 1953 off the coast of the United Kingdom. For his service aboard the USS Baltimore, Brendan earned the National Defense Service Medal established by President Eisenhower in 1953 and awarded to members of the U.S. Armed Forces who served during periods of armed conflict or national emergency from 1950 to the present. After leaving the U.S. Navy, Brendan attended Newark College of Engineering and Seton Hall University. As an accomplished dental technician and young man, Brendan left the employ of others and opened Pearson Labs, Inc. in Bayonne, which served dentists and their patients throughout the Bayonne and Hudson County communities for over 40 years. Throughout his life, Brendan frequently contributed to various charities and sponsored many youth and civic groups throughout Bayonne. He was also a committed supporter of organiza organizations for the handicapped of adults and children. Would his family come up and receive this award on his behalf? Charlie Company, First Shore 
Party Battalion was sent out on a minesweep of southwest, southwest of Da Nang in Vietnam. His platoon was responsible for keeping the road open for traffic. In September of 1967, a truck was blown up by a sizable command detonation charge. A quarter of the Marines aboard were seriously injured with one death. After a couple of weeks, the platoon returned to the Da Nang Valley. Frank and the other remaining platoon members of helicopter support team went out on Operation Foster. The team was responsible for being ground liaison with the helicopters for medevacs and resupplies. The HST had to have wounded soldiers on the landing zone and set up a secure perimeter prior to them landing. During his time with the helicopter support team in Operation Foster, Frank's platoon was caught in an ambush as they were maneuvering to rescue fellow comrades. Unfortunately, Frank was one of the casualties. He died November 19, 1967. Frank was one whom his fellow Marines could depend on, and his fellow Marines were like brothers because of the experiences they shared. Frank also always had a smile on his face and an optimistic outlook his whole life. The sacrifices that Frank Andresano Jr. made, and the many others who have, who have made the sacrifices alongside him, should never be forgotten. It is that sacrifice that has given all Americans the freedoms that we enjoy in our everyday lives. Unfortunately, many do not realize nearly enough the price paid for that freedom. The family. There's one more surprise honoree we'd like to give out today to a committee member and dedicated uh, member of the Bayonne Board of Ed, Vicki Del Regno. The committee and the Board of Ed would like to extend our thanks as you've been a tireless and dedicated supporter and champion of veterans in the city of Bayonne and the students of this community for many, many years. It's with our appreciation and our admiration that we say congratulations on your retirement. gentlemen and congratulations to all the new inductees. Job well done. We're bringing back to the stage for the conclusion of our program the Bayonne High School Bees Knees which will be performing God Bless America and we hope you join in. But allow me to explain our exit. When the song is complete the color guard will return. They'll present the colors out front and as they exit, you will begin to follow them to the place where we're going to unveil the monument. Bayonne High School students, just be patient, stay there. Don't worry, we're gonna feed you. Just, just stay there, let everybody out, and then I'll come over and take care of you. You did a great job today, guys. Ladies and gentlemen, please join us once again in our ending program song with the bee's knees. God bless America.
Everybody ready? Look, look straight ahead. Straight ahead. <laughs> 